Well, can I start? Uh, I will. Yeah, it's okay, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, friends, I'm very uh, grateful to meet you this morning. I'm Stephen Dusengmana, a lecturer from Bugema University, School of Business, and uh, specifically in Accounting and Finance Department. Uh, our topic today that we want to share is all about internal control systems in financial management. Internal control systems in financial management. When you talk about internal control systems, we are looking about the mechanisms, the rules, the procedures that a company implements to ensure the integrity of financial accounting information in the way to promote accounting and prevent the fraud within the organization. When you look about to this, we are in the position to say that uh, most of the organization would wish to find their things, the company's assets, the company's financial obligations uh, to be at always in a good position. But it is always so crucial that once these companies don't put serious measures, these companies don't look about how their internal controls can be maintained, it becomes technical hard for them to achieve their obligations. When you look about uh, one of the scholars have tried to cite, this is Amudo and Inanga 2009, they said internal control systems helps an organization or a company to prevent frauds, one, two, to prevent errors, three, and minimize the wastage. It is always very crucial that once you don't minimize uh, the errors, you will not minimize the wastage used in the organization. So uh, these internal controls always are important in the way that uh, it helps to strengthen the assets of the organization. At the same time, it provides the assurance to the management on the dependability of the organization in as far as accounting is concerned, that eliminates the unnecessary suspicion and helps in the maintenance of adequate and reliable accounting records. So it is very crucial that uh, we need to have it in mind that once we have clear concept of internal controls, because there is no any other organization that would wish to operate where the organization is full of errors. Each organization would wish to operate in a situation whereby the wastage are highly minimized. But how can this wastage be minimized if at all we don't maintain the internal controls? Remember these internal controls, they are for just for the organization. The organization itself, it's a one without looking outside, it's a one that is putting it in a press to ensure that its financial obligations are well and fully kept. Uh, when we look about uh, the same thing, when we render from Rwanda of 2018, uh, he tried to bring it from his study that it is always, there is always a general perception that the institutions and its enforcement of proper internal control systems will always lead to an improved financial performance. So it, it is, it is very significant that we need to have it in mind that once an organization implements 
it is a perception, it is a belief that most of the people believe that once internal controls are put in place, then the financial performance of the organization becomes critically clear. He, he moved a step on my right side. It is also a general brief that the proper instituted systems of internal controls improve the reporting process and also gives the rise to the reliable reporting which enhances the accountability function of management of entity. That uh, it is always from the background of having proper internal controls system within the organization that we can easily enhance our financial reporting standards. Remember, we are looking uh, for internal controls which is always uh, in collaboration with the GAAP, the General Accepted Accounting Principles. Uh, with the General Accepted Accounting Principles, we are always having it in mind that you need to provide uh, the financial statements which are free from the material errors. And um, the preparation of this, uh, is always uh, important that the ability to effectively manage the firm's business requires an accounting uh, to timely and accurate information. So there is no any other alternative. There is no any way how you receive the accurate information from the accountant of the organization and raise if you have properly instituted the internal controls, because these people are always human. So they can do what they can. So it is always the obligation of the organization to see how are our internal controls put in the press, and at the same time, how do we maintain them? Uh, we look about the policies and procedures that management can use to achieve their goals. For a management to ensure that it achieves its obligation, there are some policies and procedures that it must put in a press. Uh, because these procedures and these policies are ones that need to help this organization to ensure that it achieves its internal control systems. One, we are looking about safeguard the company's assets. It is always an obligation of the organization itself or the company itself to put in there the policy and the procedure on how the company assets can be kept safe. And we see in, in as far as using that, you need to have a well-designed internal control that protects the assets, the accidental loss, or from the fraud. And the rest, when you put it at this policy, then the organization can always, at any time, anybody can take the company's assets. Anybody can damage what he wants. And once these are damaged, then you may not easily know where and how to recover them. The organization also ensures the reliability and the integrity of financial information. It is quite analytical that most of the organizations, maybe the accountants of these organizations, can easily provide uh, financial information. But uh, as a company, we need to have it in mind that how reliable and how integrity are these information. You, we need to build from this to see that internal controls systems, once they are put in a press, that management has accurate, timely, and complete information for the accounting records in order to plan, monitor, and report business operations. But once we have the clear policies regarding the internal controls 
of the organization, then it becomes easier to monitor, plan, and see the business operations on daily basis. It is very significant. Two, the third uh, policy that needs to be uh, implemented is ensuring the compliance. Each organization must ensure that uh, there is maximum high level of compliance with the policies and the procedures in this organization. And these policies can only be observed that there is compliance once internal controls are put in place. And these internal controls help to ensure that maybe if you're operating in the uh, with many fed all the state or roles, that the regulations affecting the opening of the business are always observed. So once maybe uh, we are in a university setup whereby we have a quite big number of people. So with these big numbers of people, once you don't put there the clear policies that need to be observed, then you may not know the compliance, the level of compliance that like these members of the organization are putting in place. There is promoting efficient and effective operation. I like that, that once you put a procedure, once we put the policies regarding um, the internal controls, then we can have an effective and efficient operation. We have it in mind that internal controls can provide an environment in which managers and the staff can maximize the efficiency and effectiveness of the business operation. It is always out of having the clear internal controls that we always have it, have it crucial that the excellent execution of duties by each person or by each company's employee can be observed. So without having the clear internal controls within the organization itself as well, then uh, the efficient, the level of efficiency may not be achieved. There is always also accomplishment of goals and objectives. We need to always to go on the drawing board as an organization. We look about to the policies. We look about some procedures and we say, which organization's objectives are we having? Which goals are we having? Then if we are having them, how do we achieve them? How do we accomplish these goals? So we put there the internal control systems as a way, as a mechanism for the management to monitor the achievement of operations of the organization's objectives. It is uh, very, very crucial that um, we need to look about a lot. Then after these policies, we always have what we are calling the principles of internal control systems. Principles of internal control systems. For anything, for any system to be well achieved, for any system to meet its objectives, there must be some principles. And one of the principles which we always need to apply in as far as internal control system is concerned, is we have the principle of separation. Principle of separation. In as far as the principle of separation is concerned, it is the principle that says that financial and accounting operations must be separated, e.g. handling of the recordings or the coding of the movement thereof should be done by different person. If we want to ensure that 
we achieve the clear objectives and internal control of the organization. Then we need to see if one is supposed to be the accountant in charge of receiving, then we need to have there the accountant who is supposed to be in charge of authorizing. Then we need to be having there the accountant in charge of paying. Then we need to we need to have the separation of duties so that it is not one person who is supposed to check maybe for the voucher it is the same person who is supposed to authorize it is the same person who is supposed to pay it is the same person who is supposed to receive then there is no internal control so once we have the separation of duties then we have the maximum internal controls within the organization. The other principle that we have in internal control is the principle of responsibility. In the principle of responsibility, we are saying it is just that responsibility for performance of the job must be clearly stated so that maybe no room for doubt or confusion subsequently may happen. What are we trying to say? We are trying to say that you need as a management, you need to outline it clearly. What are the responsibilities of the manager? What are the responsibilities of the accountant? What are the responsibilities of the CEO? What are the responsibilities of the cashiers? What are the responsibilities of the HR? So that in having these responsibilities, each one of the employees of the organization can know his or her limits. Once you know your boundaries, then you know if I check, maybe assume we are using a requisition, if I check it, then there is somebody who is, who is responsible for authorizing. It is not my responsibility to do that. So there is that principle of responsibility that each one should do his responsibility to avoid the allowance of doubt. You see, once uh, you are the manager and uh, we realize that you are the same person who is going into other people's responsibility then we put in there some question mark we, we you create allowance of doubt that we may not be sure whether what you're doing may be meeting the company's objectives the other uh, principle is the principle of skepticism in the principle of skepticism it is the principle where we say too much confidence should not be pinned on one individual. Nearly have been committed by trusted officials or employees. That in the principle of skepticism, that we are saying that as an organization, whereas we may do whatever it takes to ensure that our people, our employees, are skeptical enough or we have confidence in, in in them but we need to put we we don't need to put all the confidence we don't need to put to give them they say we trust whatever you are doing we trust whatever you are doing no there is need to have somebody to cross check there is need to have somebody to uh, to to look about what you have prepared, it is financial statements. Then we need to have uh, another hand, we need to have another mind to look through it and say, do, does it really meet what we expected? So there is that principle of skepticism that most of the organizations have received the losses because they have put much confidence in one individual and it ends up making them achieve some nothing. So the principle of skepticism tells us that we need to be critical 
ensuring that we observe the responsibilities of each individual within the organization. Then the other principle is the principle of rotation. In the principle of rotation, we are saying it is the principle that relates that to the transfer of employees from one job to another. So that it should be uh, the inflexible guiding rule. You know, in most cases, what has been uh, a great challenge is when somebody has done something for quite a long time, then you find you feel you are the only person who can do it. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that we need to have this principle of rotation. As somebody who has been on a customer care desk, uh, rotate, put into the cashier's desk. If somebody has been maybe in the HR office, maybe uh, shift this person maybe to uh, the physical plant department. It is out of this that uh, the clear internal controls can be observed within the organization. We have the principle of review that the work should be arranged, that work done by one employee should be properly checked by another independent employee. It is the principle of review that we don't need to rely on one, one's work if we want to observe clearly the internal controls. Instead, we need to ensure that once there is work done by one, then it needs to be reviewed to remove the errors, to remove, uh, to minimize uh, the mistakes and the wastage into that work. Then, we have uh, the principle of clarification. Clarification principle says that clear and well-defined rules should be read down and practical forward relating to dealing with cash, ordering, receiving, and issuing of goods. There is need to be, there is need for that clarification. How much, if you say, we are ordering for 1,000, maybe goods worth $1,000. It should be clear. If, you are, if you, are, you are paying by cash, let it be clear. If you did not receive, then rates, rates have maybe when you have recorded an accounts receivable. So that's uh, maybe we may not, we may know exactly how much has gone out, how much are we expecting, and how much is remaining. Then we have uh, the, the last principle, which is uh, the principle of documentation. In the principle of documentation, we are saying there is always the arrangement of the work should be in a such manner that a record, a written records or part played by each employee should be maintained and the work should pass through severance in a well-defined manner. So when it comes to documentation, the principle of documentation in internal control systems, in financial management, we need to see that everything should be backed by a document. If you say, we spent this, where are the receipts? Where are the invoices? where are all the documents, the supporting documents that relate to the work that was done. If you are the ones who did this, then we expect somebody who paid to be having the similar information that the accountant receiving is also having. Maybe the accountant in charge of maybe authorization should be having the similar information. So, we always need to observe the principle of documentation. Documents should always be available. Documents should be presented. Documents should be well defined so that whoever comes can easily read through them and understand exactly what is within that document. Then uh, we have uh, the framework of internal control the framework of internal control. 
Uh, when you look about a framework of internal control, we say a good internal control system should include one of the following. One, there is need for the control environment. Need for control environment, we are trying to say that a sound control environment is created by management through communication, attitude. For example, this may include focus on integrity, a commitment to investigating the discrepancies, the diligences, designing systems, and assigning responsibility. So when you want to ensure that there is maximum internal control to ensure a high level of financial performance, then there is need to control the environment, whereby one, you start by communicating. You need to communicate to your subordinates. If you are the manager, communicate to your subordinates. Let them be well acquainted with what the organization wants. Then there is risk assessment. It involves identifying the areas in which the greatest threat or the risk of an occurrence or risk exists. Identify, make risk assessment. It is a clear level that maybe if it involves cash, maybe you have a high risk of cash, then say, how are we going to ensure that the risk rating rating to cash, then we can maintain it. Mm? Uh, so it, it, it is always very obvious and very important to ensure that this one is put in the press. Another framework is monitoring and reviewing that uh, the system of internal control should be periodically reviewed by the management. By performing a periodic assessment, management assures that internal control activities have not been oros due to the turnover or of other factors. The internal controls that we may be using today may be different from what we shall use tomorrow. So it is very critical that we need to have them on board at the same time and we need to review them all the time. Information and communication, whereby we say most of the organization, most of the employees, most of the subordinates don't perform because the availability of the information and its flow plan is not clear. So you need to ensure that there is a clear information that is presented. And this will always, up, uh, on a paramount, to be a good internal control. Communicate all the time. If this is what you want, then put it into communication, direct. Then the other framework is control of activities. In control of activities, we are saying that uh, it is very significant that um, the activities that occur within the internal control system, we see some of them that are uh, activities that may be involved, that need to be controlled. Uh, one of them, there is always internal control activities that we need to observe. There is always preventive controls, whereby when you talk about in the preventive controls that uh, we are looking about the aim to deter errors of fraud from happening within the organization. In preventive controls, we are saying we are ensuring that it is a key part of the process to ensure that no single individual is in the, pos in the position to authorize, record, and be in a custody of the financial institution of financial transaction. So uh, that it may include maybe separation of duties, pre-approval of action and transactions, access controls, fiscal controls, employment screening and training. So this work cannot be done by one individual. Otherwise, you find when you are having ghost workers because you don't have a clear systematic internal control. Uh, the other activity that can be done is uh, detective control. In the detective controls, 
We are saying uh, it is always, these are the backup procedures that are designed to catch the events that have been missed by the first line of defense. If uh, in the first control we have not uh, seen it, then in detective control it should be observed. One, there we may talk about maybe the monthly reconciliation of departmental transactions. It is very significant. Two, there is need for review of organization performance, e.g. maybe the budget to the actual company's uh, expectation, maybe the physical inventories. On that, you are, looking, you are detecting your own detective control. If the accountant has said, this is how much we had on the ground, go and recount find out whether specifically what has been brought into the financial statements, whether it is what is clearly on the ground. Then the last activity is corrective control. In corrective control, we're saying uh, these are form of internal controls which resolve any errors found by internal detective. And in most cases, the corrective process run a fine tooth comb with the access control to ensure the same mistakes or the potential occurrence not happen again. That is corrective control. Once you realize that there are some mistakes which had happened earlier, then it is very, very important. It is very, very significant that you need to ensure that you correct that mistake not to happen again within the organization. Components of internal control system structure, components of internal control structure, one, uh, first, one of its components according to the committee of sponsoring organization, uh, they try to identify some components of this, one of them being control of environment, that uh, in the first structure, you need to ensure that uh, you control the environment, which involves the integrity and ethical values. It involves the commitment of competence, the board of directors and the audit committee, the management philosophy and operating styles, and the assignment of authority and responsibility, plus the human resource policies. There is always risk assessment as the components of internal control structure. There is information and communication. There is control activities. There is monitoring. And um, in monitoring, we are saying monitoring is always a process that assesses the quality of internal control structure performance over time. That even when we may be having whatever we may call relevant. It is very significant that we need to have it on board that monitoring should be uh, a lifetime obligation within the company. Limitations of internal controls. Uh, as an organization, at times we receive some limitations. We have some uh, circumstances whereby we find we are limited in as far as our internal controls are, seen, are limited. Then one of the limitations is the judgment. The judgment. When we talk about judgment, we are talking about the effectiveness of control will be limited by decisions made by the human judgment under pressure to conduct business based on the information at hand. That at times, you may take a decision, you may make your judgment basing on the information available, but it, may have, it might have been gathered under pressure. So that one may give you not clearly what you ought to have received. So you find it is a limitation. You find you have not got exactly what you ought to get because of the pressure or because of 
the power information that you may have gathered. Then there is breakdowns that even well-designed internal control system can break down. Employees sometimes may misunderstand the instructions or simply make mistakes. Errors may also result from the technology and the complexity of computerized information system. So with uh, the use of technology, you may do some errors when you did not intend to do them. So it becomes a limitation. The computer may break down. So once the computers may be crashed, then what do you expect? The whole source of information has gone. So you, the internal control may not be exactly the way you expected them. Hmm? Uh, it is very uh, hard to make that. Then the other limitation is the management override. When you talk about the management override, you are saying a high level personnel may be able to override the prescribed policies and the procedures that a person will gain or advantage. That uh, one of the management team uh, or management members may be in a position to do some of the things according to his or her expectation. You are not doing it because of the good of the organization, but somebody may do it because you want your things to go through. So it becomes a limitation because you find it is the management uh, colliding with uh, the policies. Then another limitation is always the corrosion that control systems can be uh, circumvented by employees corrosion that individuals, you find that you are colliding. These corrosions may become a challenge and uh, it becomes very hard to, uh, that cannot be identified by the internal control because the internal control may not look, go into deep to know exactly what was on the ground. Cost versus benefits, whereby you find the cost of an entity's internal control structure may exceed the benefits that is expected to be ensured. So if the organization is not properly putting internal control because the cost of putting the internal controls are higher than the benefits from that control. And there is unusual transactions whereby it is a final transaction whereby final limitation of internal control that are generally designed to do normal or routine happens in the business. Unusual transaction, maybe an emergence has happened. So which forces an organization to take a decision that may be limiting the internal control. Internal control weaknesses as a, um, internal control, it has also its weakness. One of them being the technical internal control weakness, whereby in the technical internal control weakness, we are saying, the technical security controls encompasses both hardware and software, that anything can happen to the system. As how we saw that uh, in 2017, it happened in the eternal blue wave vulnerability that discovered the Windows protocol in 2017, but had exposed the existing Windows system to the attack. So it is a technical, it is a technical weakness that I may be using my computer, but before I finish my presentation, power may jump off. Maybe my computer can shut down. So I find it is one of uh, the technical weaknesses also in internal control. There is operational internal control weakness, whereby in operational internal control weakness, we are saying it focuses on internal monitoring and implementation on management, on day-to-day -day business operations, that practically it becomes hard to ensure that uh, uh, these internal controls are done on day-to-day -day basis. At times, it is not substantial easier to be achieved. Mm -hmm. Then there is administrative control weakness, whereby maybe you may find that administration may fail to comply with the established standards and regulations 
For example, administration control on the regular backups of critical system. So once uh, these administrators at times, if they don't adhere to what the policy is saying, then it becomes a weakness so that they verify the backups can be successfully recovered. So the administration plays a very vital role in ensuring that that is achieved. Then there is the architectural internal control weakness, whereby this one focuses on the how to create a unified system for documenting, addressing the risk of the information technology environment. That the architecture work of maybe one may be different from the other. So it becomes uh, very critical that when it comes to internal controls, uh, at times uh, you may not achieve what you wanted. Uh, then they look about ways to identify and fix the internal control weaknesses. If these weaknesses are there, how do we identify and fix them? One, we use what you're calling the catalog internal control procedure. In catalog internal control procedure, we say it includes the financial transaction documentation, procurement, and all that may Hello, uh, where? Yeah. Where are you going? Where? He masih keluar apa? Kepental. <laughs> Ini masih barusan ngabarin lagi pray join again and because he have a bad network maybe he will join five minutes again. Jadiin kohos mbak minta tolong. Good morning, sir. Oh, we will train.
Yes. Ya. Yeah. Ini kayaknya uh, internetnya Bapak ke jelek. Saya kan di, masih try to join di konfirmasinya. Oke, okay, oke okay, ditunggu dulu gitu. Mm, ini 5 menit lagi kita bisa mulai lagi ya untuk audiens. Maaf Bapak Ibu sekalian, uh, Pak Stevennya, Mr. Stevennya lagi ada kendala jaringan, dimohon menunggu lima menit lagi. Terima kasih.
Ya, untuk Bapak Ibu, terima kasih yang bersedia menunggu Bapak Stephen. Tapi mohon maaf di sini karena ada kendala teknis di Bapak Stephennya. Acara hari ini mungkin cukup sampai di sini saja. Dan link absennya udah saya cantumkan di, di live chat. Bagi Bapak Ibu yang mau absen, gimana? Yang mau absen, silahkan absen terlebih dahulu. Terima kasih. Terima kasih Pak Adit, Bu Asri, Bu Wina, Bu Uti. Bagi yang belum absen, mohon diharap absen terlebih dahulu sebelum acara ini disudahi. Terima kasih.
Terima kasih untuk Bapak Ibu sekalian. Jangan lupa subscribe dan like uh, channel Universitas Tekom. Dan apa tunggu tunggu kembali channel-channel berikutnya. Saya mohon pamit untuk menutup acara hari ini. Terima kasih dan selamat siang. Ya, iya, pasti. Uh, maaf sebelumnya, sebelum ditutup, mari kita foto bersama. Mohon bagi yang kameranya belum dihidupkan, dimohon dihidupkan terlebih dahulu. Sebentar. Sekali lagi, bagi yang kameranya belum dihidupkan, dimohon dihidupkan terlebih dahulu untuk foto bersama. Saya mulai. Satu, dua, tiga. Satu kali lagi, satu, dua, tiga. Terima kasih atas kehadiran dan ketersediaannya untuk menunggu Bapak Stefan. Acara ini saya akhiri. Selamat siang dan selamat beraktivitas. Terima kasih.